I'm taking Fearful on everyone on Cultist Origin, so I hope that synergizes pretty well. So the game plan is I basically keep these guys as my babies. I think I already named all of them, no only one, so I don't know, the shield guy's gonna be Jason because obviously he's tanky and who can take more shots to their face than Jason. And I also gotta remember to change everyone's name to at least cultist and depending on what their roles are, maybe I can turn this guy into a terrible duelist. It's not a good idea, but hey. Anyways, I'm just gonna go with cultist for the time being, so comment on comments if you have any good name ideas. If you don't, I'm just gonna go with horror movie tropes, I guess. Here you go! Names, and I take everyone's clothes off. These guys are all gonna go to backline, and they're gonna live till, well, whatever. And their build tree, which I might post on somewhere, but it's the, my nimble fodder fatigue neutral build, which my nimble fodders generally turn into if they live long enough. And basically I'm just gonna hire some fodders, and because of the mod I'm using, I chose all the stats and the crappy traits, things like this. I just do it to save time, because I don't have all day. I work. Uh, here's guard, what does it pay? I don't care. Let's see, so the here's guard is over here. Eh, the map itself is actually quite good because you have a port here, which can take you here and down all the way to south. The map itself and the spread between the settlement is quite big and commerce isn't too good, but Wood is one of those resources. Blah, 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 blah. Wood is one of those resources that you can pretty much sell anywhere for a decent price with the quite frequent event, the repair thingy. So we'll see how that goes, and obviously with a lot of hunter cabins and stuff, you can get a lot of hunters. So it's probably not the most ideal seat for the cultist origin, but I think it's good enough. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna take that quest, but before I'm gonna buy some things. Maybe a net. So difficulty I'm playing is expert combat and everything else is easy because, well, I don't like grinding. And yeah, I'm just gonna buy some cheap knives and spears to equip my... So remember to name everyone something that's distinguishable in their names. Otherwise, when the cultist sacrifice or conversion event comes up, you're gonna be hella confused. So, sacrifice or victim. 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 Well, actually, he might be a candidate. He has decent enough attack and one star in defense. So, cultist origin, if you guys are not familiar with, you basically have a very crappy pool of recruit that you can recruit from mostly because the fact that the conversion event basically can only happen to the lowborns which are things like day tailors and fishermen and dumb or brain damaged recruits so this guy i want to live this guy can well more or less die but i'll try to keep him alive as long as i need to anyways going back to the thing yep so you have to keep them, keep the cultists alive as much as possible because the how the conversion works is the longer, the more cultists you have, basically more chance that they have to convert people, so non cultists. So you want them alive as much as possible. So even with all these suboptimal bros, to be honest, if I was playing normal game, I would only keep this guy. And that is even a quite a generous choice because he's got a club foot, which isn't the best thing you can have. Anyways, yep, this caravan quest should be alright, and I am gonna save scum if I have to. Ah, oh, I'm an idiot, sorry, here we go. And this guy, well, I can have him or not. I can take or lose, but 510 for... Oh, his health is alright, and... 
he might turn into a good headhunter. Eh. I'd rather not. I'll just take this one sacrifice. I'll keep. I'll probably my game plan is having like maximum two maybe. Oh, this guy is quite good. He's not the best, but eh, he'll suffice for now. So in in early game, if you're playing like completely beginner expert, you definitely want to buy some cheap armors like that are damaged. Or just cheap in general, maybe not these, but at least a decent enough helmet like these Gamberson or Akiton heads. And maybe some pitchforks if they're cheap, and knives as well if they're broken, why not? So yeah, that's what I'm, what I'm gonna buy for the time being, so this guy can have a pitchfork. And I just gotta give these guys something, so remember to name them. This idiot might... I don't know if having idiot increases the chance of being converted. I don't think so. And... Uh, I hate you so much. Why do you have cocky? Uh, I'll might do it later. I want to kill some bandit thugs. I think this is it. Yep. Ooh, that's a... Uh, okay, a shunter. Greedy actually might be really okay on the cultist run because... Your cultists don't actually, you don't have to pay cultists a lot. I did, ah, here we go. So their like wage is pretty cheap. But anyways, ah, here's another good doofus that I might actually use. All these doofuses, where do we get them? Ooh, this guy's the master. So the master is another mod I use where recruits can just spawn with maximum talent. And their talent can, but their talent is pretty willingly, and their stats spawn is maximum. But yeah, these, this guy's definitely top tier recruit. But I don't think I should hire him just now. Maybe after the sacrifice spent, and I'll see what happens. And I really don't know where this is gonna go, to be honest. Because I'm not really accustomed to a style where I keep my basically sacrifice bros as long as possible i normally just let them die so the build i'm gonna go is something like basically i might even skip student if i have to but for the backline i shouldn't it's just colossus and dodge so that the fathers can basically double group as soon as possible anyway so it's pretty much same as fodder but when i build a fatigue neutral fodder and this is perfect this is the exact fight I want. And look, I even got a good terrain. So I'm gonna kite them, see what they do. Also, if you, if you haven't done already, install this mod. I think it's called Autopilot. It's one of the most useful mod in the game, I, in my opinion. Just because of how convenient it makes, like, mess weight? Yes, please. So the reason I'm kiting backwards right now, even though I don't have any range, is just to get the terrain advantage, maybe go here. If they decide to rush, I can fight them here, which isn't too bad. And they're probably gonna try to flank me like this, I think. But we'll see what happens. So my front line should quite easily tank what's going on with these guys and I don't want to take any risks too much because I do want my fathers to live to some point and which reminds me I actually also have to get some reser reservoir recruits who I can sacrifice at times so there you go that guy's charging I'll wait I'll wait till they all actually engage or something they decide not to, I'm, di I'm just gonna basically focus them down. 39, who, who do I have most chance to hit this guy? Whip's actually pretty powerful in the early game, considering how much damage it does. And I'm just gonna shield her with this guy. Mainly because... Yeah, 
There you go, that guy goes down. I, d I might not even have to shield wall. And if they rush, let them die. And this guy is the most high value target here. And maybe I'll try to break his morale. Nice. Ooh, there you go. Start breaking. And yeah, this guy's the tankiest of all. And if it allows, I'm definitely gonna try to get his armor. Honestly, we'll just see what happens. And as you can see, I can I play pretty recklessly, and that's just my playstyle in general. I'm too lazy. There you go, breaks that guys. And I basically compensate my laziness by having the uh, economical advantage as to other players who's playing the hardest difficulty with economy and everything but mostly i just do it to avoid grind i want to decapitate you for the show and i forgot the existence of, existence of this guy Well, and look at this. This is so handy. Look. How did you even escape, you? You get. And let's go. Get this guy's armor if possible. This guy wouldn't drop an armor. But I think I can get him to break. There you go. And maybe I should have fished for his hat. And if it allows, I might chase the other guy. There you go. I can probably kill him. Dafko, guide me. If you miss one more time, you're the next sacrifice. And is it worth killing this guy? Yes, his, he's an experience point. He's carrying a shield, so it's definitely worth killing him. If you miss one more time, I don't care. You're the next sacrifice. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna remember. Oh, God damn it. I'm gonna name you so that I can kill you. I mean, what kind of chances did you actually miss? 43... 43. Okay, that's actually a reasonable chance to miss, but holy crap, you, you moron. And now you probably have like... Now you hit? Come on! Duff Cool does things in some Duff Cooly ways. Of course, such a mouthful thing to say. Anyways, that's first win. No one died. Pretty swell battle. And I'm gonna give this bloated, blotched gambers, and I love the historical accuracy in this game to an extent. It's mostly ac it's accurate enough. Let's put it that way. No one's got level up, but that's expected. And I'm probably gonna roll with these nine for now and. I didn't forget, yeah, you're you're getting a new name. Of course you're that cocky asshole. Okay, you're gonna be You're gonna be You're gonna be You're gonna be T Bone. Taylor. My nimble tank was a tailor. Tailors are not very good back ah, okay, I do have to hire him. Ooh, he can be the Freddy Krueger or it's not exactly horror movie that but Edward Scissorhands was it? Either the audience is old enough to know this reference, but or I'm actually like too young to probably know the reference. I don't know what other like actual good players do, but I just roll with a lot of fodder bros in the like early game and just not care when they die. And Rangers as well. That might be of interest. No, oh, the terrain's working against me. Uh, yeah, let's go here. 
so one thing I'm really afraid of is the bullshit throwing weapon shenanigans and they just get one shot kill on my backline. Obviously my backline isn't too valuable per se, but like I said, more cultists you have, more chance of you converting other non-cultist bros. So I'm gonna see if I can draw them in like here or at least just separate them as best as I can. I want this guy's armor and possibly his as well. But we'll see what happens. So he decides to charge but he's only a thug. And there's six of them. Uh, I think I'm gonna go back a few more tiles and maybe create... Now choke point's actually gonna work against us so... I don't think anyone might have a throwing weapon. But... You never know. And I'm only seeing five at the moment, so maybe one dude's hiding. I think he might be actually a raider. Ooh, that's the worst way to hydrate myself. Oh, never mind, he's a thug. So, goal is probably bait them another tile again. And try to get a surround from this angle. Kind of create that good surround. And this guy is gonna basically prevent any flanking. Uh, we might get T-Bone to actually come here. Okay, so next turn this guy is gonna engage with him and he might get one-shotted in the head or not. We'll see what happens and this guy can't attack me regardless if he tries to engage that's fine my concern is this side if this guy is actually get engaged he's gonna go down really really fast but let's see if i've actually made a poor judgment no they decided not to engage for the time being So we'll see what everyone else does. Ah, you actually decided to come here. So this guy is definitely high priority. And yeah, let's see if we can hold them, this guy off. Yeah, that's good. Nice job, T-Bone. You finally hit something. And this guy will actually relocate to kill this thug. And I'm gonna try to get these guys armor even if that costs me some bros. Or oh, some acceptable bros like this guy. Yep, he's gonna shield well, that's fine. We're gonna wait a turn. Maybe I shouldn't have, I should have moved this guy first. But like I said. 53. Yep, expected that much. Eh, why not? Yep, we want to kill him as fast as we can. And just gonna surround. And this guy's definitely gonna shield well. And we might throw some nets. My god, the spear is so accurate. Uh, 
Uh, is it worth trying to steal his weapon? There you go. Ah, oh, you didn't break. Well done. There you go, he breaks. Uh, why didn't I why didn't I equip you with a knife? Oh well. I can make some sacrifices. Go and down he goes. Okay, so he's out, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty easily gonna get his thingy off. Yes, well done. Ah, he didn't break. So, the reason I'm carrying bludgeons rather than knife is one because I don't think I have one. And two, because I can stun things if I do. Ah, oh, he can actually escape. Oh well. Might have to reorganize our plan. But with all the sloppy mistakes I'm making, I don't think that's the biggest one. <laughs> And our priority is that guy at the time being. And seriously. He's slippery. And one thing I gotta be careful is that guy actually getting his morale back. This guy I'm not too worried because he's gonna break at some point. Ah, uh, his armor might break. But let's see if we can get a surround on him. Uh, is it worth moving you? I don't think so. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ah, uh, this actually might be a good enough location. To get a proper surround. So I'm gonna move this guy and just take my chances on getting both armors. So how the net works is higher the melee attack is, the more chance you have. Does it actually show you? Uh, it might. Ah, here we go. So yeah, he only has 32% chance because he's broken. So his melee attack's gone down by a lot. And there you go. That should give him... That should at least give me his weapons. And yeah, you try to run, but you can't. So surround mechanic in this game is... Well, area of control in this game is quite interesting. In uh, regards that... Remember how he ran away from this? Because he wasn't actually fully surrounded. Because this guy doesn't actually penalize his, his zone of control. So he could actually get out like this. But per se... If I did this, he wouldn't like try to run away to this tile because it's actually considered blocked. It's something interesting to consider if you're doing things like this and trying to get your knife guys to surround. It's definitely a technique you will not use on everyday basis, but sometimes you will use it. And I'm I'm gonna assume that his morale doesn't break. I mean, return. I'm actually not too sure about that. I think as long as you're take he's da taking damage, his chance to recover comes thin. With your bros, like longer they are like in fleeing state, at some point they'll recover. But I don't know for the AI. 
But hopefully that gives me his armors. <sighs> These guys' fatigues are so bad. There you go. Come on. Come on, Mr. Raider. There you go. Down you go. Sacrifice died. But we got these juicy, juicy armors. Even got the blotched Gamberson, which I believe he was wearing. Okay. Well, at least we got it back. And T-Bone. Ah, oh, T-Bone, you disappoint me in every aspect. I don't know, T-Bone's gonna be the typical, typical. He's just gonna be a fat neutral damage dealer with nimble. And with fatigue neutral builds, you don't actually have to invest in bloody fatigue at all. And with Darth Cool Cultist, you don't even have to invest resolve. And according to Turtle's guides, so Fearsome actually works really well with having less resolve. But I assume since Darth Cool Cultist just rains you down with extra resolve with all the events and the the 10 extra you get from being a apostle or whatever. The this thing. I don't know, does anyone have like higher rank? But anyways, with this, I think you get 10 extra resolve at some point. And some other cool perk. Ooh. He said... Who's Hildebert? I think he was the father. Yes, he is. Oh well. Better than nothing and we can sacrifice him pretty easily. See, this is what happens. This is exactly what happens if you don't name people. It's like having an appointment and you just booking at the last minute but they are actually okay with it and you get the appointment. That's what this quest is like. I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point but yeah, we can definitely go for your coat. And yeah, why not? I shouldn't actually be attacking him, I should be just daggering this guy down, but I'm too lazy. Oh well, I probably won't get your coat. Can't get your coat, I'm gonna get your friend's buckler. Even though it's garbage. And yeah, I want some names for my bros. Other than T-Bone, T-Bone's gonna die at some point, so I don't even need his name. So, our cultist friend got his level up. It's obviously better than T-Bone's level up, but... And all my cultists got level up. Oh, I really want to keep this guy, but... I'm gonna bet he's gonna, like, go away. So, I was thinking instead of having two shield bros, which I normally do with one extra banner shield guy, I was thinking of having spear mastery duelist flanks. The problem is... Because of the reduced damage of the spear wall, you can't actually quite reliably proc fearsome unless it's like light armored guys. And even with duelists, I think orc young is probably the most reliable thing you can check with. T-Bone, you're gonna have a new exciting life in the front lines. So I gotta actually figure out which cities have tavern in case I have to sacrifice some bros which is bound to happen at some point. Keep that as our, basically where we end our first episodes. <clears throat> I'm gonna end it once I sacrifice a bro. It might be tomorrow, it might be in 10 days, who knows. Luckily for you, it's gonna be heavily edited. I actually wonder what happens if all your cultist bros die. Dove cool origins are very slow, mainly because of the events that sacrifices your bros and everyone decides to leave or your cultists die it's very hard to recover i want some garbage bros so that i can sacrifice and some nachos reason being you want to unlock the scout as po as soon as possible that's the only reason yeah i think that should count i got the last hit look everyone's eager this is the best time to get the event and so the bonus is some the cultist can actually bestow upon you is quite significant in terms that they actually boost your what is it resolve middle defense and fatigue and health only thing it doesn't give you is extra attack 
so T-Bone, you are gonna hold a spear because you're pathetic. And maybe I should give this guy a... Okay, remember to name people. Ooh, this is the event. Ooh, it's the worst time to <laughs> trigger this event, but the idiot's like not too angry at me, so hopefully this works. No, there's no tavern. Hopefully this town doesn't have a tavern. God damn it. Ooh. Uh, Flake, basically. Oh, of course he lives, but he's a sacrifice. And honestly, this guy... Not being too angry at me is the best thing happened. It's a bit sad that he might have to go, but it happens. No, not the tailor. Edward Scissorhands. 